Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello and welcome to the show today. You know, we hit show 200 on Thursday. Woohoo! Thank you very much for listening and all that good stuff and subscribing so we're on 201 today the celebration's over uh, but that's okay we can still talk sex no problem there and we're going to talk about you know large penises and how to have good sex with it and how to work with it position wise what we're gonna, you know, talk about first is prone masturbation. How many of you out there, guys, who masturbate face down on the bed? And feel some of you raising your hand there, <laughs> even though I cannot see you. Uh, actually, you should stop doing that. It's very, very bad. And that is our topic for today. And as usual, we'll have a sexual position in there. But we'll be talking about other sexual positions today. So, let's get into our topic and discussing prone masturbation. What is it? And why do you need to stop? Because I'm telling you to stop. No, it does cause health risks. Especially to your a penis, and more that way, erectile dysfunction. And we want to have sex, so can't be having that. You know, need our partners in very good uh, sexual health, shall we say. Now, uh, from society to society, obviously different views are met with this. Because um, one example is the Indian society in India. Many of the men actually do perform prone masturbation or uh, stimulating sexual acts. And this is to stimulate sexual intercourse with them and enhance their sexual pleasure. Unfortunately, people, this is bad. This is really, really bad because sometimes, you know, certain, you can masturbate. Masturbate is probably like one of the best things in the world. Sometimes, especially if you're having issues. However, if you still are sexually functional and everything else, this, you know, masturbating, solo play, what you want to call it, actually will help you have uh, a more controlled ejaculation. Uh makes you go a little longer because you are working out like you're getting the initial uh, ejaculation out and then you're coming down and you're closing down you're not having sex or anything but then you're coming down and you're getting used to having it with the point you're more control when you're you know with your partner I mean they're little 
sex toys out there too that can help along with that. But it also helps you really to learn about you, what turns you on and what gets you off and helps with your orgasm, make it last longer and all that good stuff. So you know, there are some things out there. If you do it too long, you actually make it to the point where mere sexual intercourse isn't worth it for you that much anymore because you can't get yourself off of the so that leads to sexual dysfunction lower sexual performance and there's a you know a whole amount of sexual problems that come along with it and prone masturbation is one of those so some people are looking at this oh prone masturbation i'm i'm prone to masturbate it's not that easy <laughs> you can think it is but it's not so with prone masturbation the man stimulates the pe his penis while lying on his stomach with his hands hand pillow mattress or sexual toy uh believe it or not 10 percent of males engage in prone masturbation it's a way of getting off finding that spot that gets you off but then it becomes an addiction and there's a lot of other different sexual problems that uh, come into place and obviously like I said sexual dysfunction is up there and erectile dysfunction is up there so how does it affect you long t your poor little penis little Pete down there long term it affects it because uh, if you engage in prone masturbation it places the act of doing it, and you're getting sexually aroused, by the way, because so your penis is getting very hard. Obviously, I know there are some people out there who have a hole in their bed, and they can use that. Well, they have two twin beds put together, and they're in between it. So you're giving the penis some room to rub up against and everything. But with prone, you're literally, there is no space between your penis and your bed. Yeah, think about it. The penis gets hard. It extends your when you're doing pro, you know when you're engaging in prone masturbation you're kind of limiting that extension and because of that it you know it places tremendous pressure on the penis base uh, and it can make you uh, have a hard time like achieving an orgasm and obviously, I've spoken about this one before, which is anagorga or angorgasmia, which is having a very difficult time achieving an orgasm. And we don't want that. Orgasms are our friends. Uh, and believe, yeah, so we don't want to have that dysfunction. Not to mention, you want to please your partner. You know, you don't want to be unable to do so because that's going to press more pressure on you mentally. Which also is going to affect your genitals. So you need to remember that as well. Now, there is, there's about nearly 60%, that's over 50% reported prone masturbators. And they have reported that they suffer from angorasmia. And this is a real sexual problem. You so the whole idea of sex, or at least you know, interacting with the intimacy, the bond, the you can even do out of play or have just foreplay, but allowing yourself to have that orgasm, getting so sexually aroused. This is what it's about. Now, prone masturbation uh, also makes it harder for men to have an erect penis. It's a point you can't get it up no more. And uh, studies have shown about approximately 33% of prone males who uh, do the act of prone masturbating 
have trouble with erectile dysfunction. We don't want that. We want to see old Petey boy. So, penis ours our friend. And it's yours as well, and everybody who kind of worships it. You know, booger, one-eyed pirate. So, moving along. Stop it! Stop prone masturbators. And this is to avoid that potential danger to your penis. There are some things you can do, or at least attempt to do. Obviously, if you are far foregone, you really need the help of a doctor at this point and therapist. So do look into it. Now, one of the first steps to accomplishing this is to just completely stop engaging in it. Cold turkey, just stop. And then, instead of doing prone masturbation, you go back to traditional ways of masturbating. Sitting on the toilet with a magazine. Stroking away. You know, in your bed, comfortable, loop of choice. Make, you know, set the scene. If you know you're going to see your date or whatever beforehand, you get it out so that you can last in the bedroom. Who's to say if you're having problems or whatever? Uh, obviously, it's going to be difficult at first because you have gotten to a point where this is, you know, prone masturbation, which is also called traumatic masturbation syndrome. You've had a certain feel, a certain response, a certain a certain everything when you do it. So going back to traditional, you're not getting those same responses. And all that, feet, no, outer, um, that outward things that help you to have that stimulation. No, once you have, you know, completed just stopping and you are now working out back on that traditional masturbation track. Now try using some herbal remedies to treat whatever the nerve and tissue damage, which is possibly leading up to that penile damage, to help restore it and work it again. Now obviously if you've only done it one or two times, this probably has not made a lot of damage so just stop it but for those of you who have have been at it for some time and engaging in this type of masturbation just, you it's cold turkey you gotta stop and go back to traditional um perfect examples of herbal remedies are astragalus i'm definitely going to spell that <laughs> A-S-T-R-A-G-A-L-U-S Membraneous Okay, so that means membrane Cornus officinalis oh, I have no idea, but to look at corn it has something to do with corn uh, Opiopogon Obviously, it's got some sort of opiate in it and a natural one, uh, poppy seeds. Well, it's not natural, but you get opioids from poppy seeds. And you can get those on a bagel in your food and stuff like that. Just remember that they do show up in your system as a drug. Okay, so even though you think you're just having a poppy seed bagel. Um, these are, are really old. Um, completely safe herbal remedies and it these really have a tendency to work wonders with this particular with prone people who prone masturbate and the damage that is done from it and it also helps and it helps with the stopping and reversing uh the penile dam difference being the difference the penile <laughs> the penile damage boy it is early um from like conducting or engaging shall I say in prone masturbation now you when you're doing it when you are you know actually engaging in prone masturbation you don't really realize 
or you're aware of its long-term damaging effects. You're just in there and you're getting your groove on because you are horny and you want to get it, you know, get the best stimulation possible by yourself. But it does have those learned long-term damaging effects. And this is on your sex lives as well, not only as your penis, your male part, your genitalia, Whatever way you want to call it, it isn't only just damage to that. You know, the damage to your sex life is because you think that it is the best way to stimulate uh, for the, you know, for pleasures that sexual, that like sexual intercourse will bring you. So you're kind of sort of trying to imitate that by prone masturbating but that's not that you're totally destroying penis that way sex does not destroy the penal base it doesn't damage it and it doesn't lead to major sexual problems there's a difference there so on that note we are going to take our first break in the show and then we come back we will continue on with the topic of prone masturbation or traumatic masturbation uh, syndrome as it is called and the damages possible uh, sexual positions nice good ones especially we're also going to you know talk for one where uh, someone is extremely well endowed and getting the best overall sexual pleasure when you can't completely penetrate so on that note please get a drink get a snack come back get relaxed and i will meet you back here for more sex talk with andra after the break still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am a, your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back. Hope you had a nice little break there, because we are talking about prone masturbation, or more of a technical Traumatic masturbation syndrome, which is more damaging than actual sex. And with it, what you're doing is, is you are masturbating, mainly men, because this affects men, than it does women. We have no protruding genitalia down in the lower regions. And it's masturbating while laying on your stomach and it does damage the penal shaft it damages the nerves and anything that the strength of it the tissue it makes it that much more difficult to even have sex it leads to sexual dysfunction so you are making more problems because you want to masturbate on your belly on a bed now, sex is a good for our lovely little friend, the penis, that little intercourse back and forth, actually uh, strengthens the penis. 
in that case it makes sex much more pleasurable you know and that's like the only reason you need to know about this and why sex is good and not prone masturbation regular masturbation traditional masturbation solo play whatever the new words are for it today in today's society is a-okay it's actually really good for you helps with erectile dysfunction it strengthens what you learned about yourself just like with women Mas- you know that solo play you discover things that turn you on what how to touch how to you know where to touch really and you know that's a good thing but prone masturbation is you know when it has just gone too far per se and it's more damaging it's because of the uh, position how it's done and the fact that a man gets erect and it makes it very difficult for that it does harm your penis i'm telling you that right now uh and don't forget that (laughs) it you know it's good to masturbate but cold you know you're gonna have to stop cold turkey and when you stop cold turkey you just go right back to digital which in the beginning will probably be very difficult because remember you masturbate a certain way to you know get that feeling out and to get turned on and you know get that orgasm but unfortunately prone masturbation also can lead to anagrasmia which is the difficultiness of having an orgasm and we don't want to go from one problem to the next so you actually want to have very very good sexual fun with whichever partner you want or more and partners if you want to do orgies go for it that's where it is but it does does uh produce more problems than solutions in the sexual stimulation area and we don't want you to have that we want you to have great sex now overcoming that and i put a few things in there it's like stopping and then going back to traditional masturbation and then trying some herbs and stuff that will help strengthen and uh there are a little bit of opioid things out there which natural herbs and i'm not talking about the drug itself natural herbs here uh so don't go back and say oh I heard it on here on the podcast. She said you use it. No, <laughs> I'm not being held responsible for that one. You are out of your mind. So I, you know, we're going to continue on with overcoming prone masturbation, or as it is called, traumatic masturbation syndrome. And this, because this is a big sexual dysfunction and and, you know erectile dysfunction is out there and masturbation is actually really good for that just not this masturbation um and it's actually the prone part of it is the position part of it and just meaning you know laying face down on the bed and then getting off and it's not good and you're getting really kind of sort of you know when you're going back to that traditional masturbation you know and engaging in it it is very difficult because you had a different sensation when you were in the prone position now you're in traditional you know sitting with one leg up or sitting down on a chair and leaning back and thinking or on the couch or laying down on your back you got to kind of sort of retrain yourself and believe it or not, there is 90% of males who masturbate by hand. And then there's that 5 to 10% who, 
who masturbate by laying face down and thrusting th their penis into or against a pillow, the bed, or something else that they is going to give them that same sensation. You know that masturbation is healthy for you. I don't have to say anything about that. I don't have to explain it. But we don't want you to hurt. That's what we're trying to do here. And we're going to go through, you know, some prone masturbation and like the problems that the practitioners have or people who actually engage in it have. And there's some uh, case studies out there and probably some other approaches aside from the few that I gave you, but those are like the main ones to work with and probably, you know, and it's going to be difficult because if you have difficult, you're going to have to reach out to someone and see a professional. How do you unlearn prone masturbation? Because remember, when you masturbate or you do things, you do it, especially if it's an orgasm induced uh, act, you you know that's going to get you off. You know? So you, we have a tendency as humans to be habitual in what we do and how we do things. Because we know it's habit forming. We know that this is what gets us off. We know to have the best orgasm for yourself is when you're in a certain position. When you're prone masturbate, you're getting that same sensation, but it's not for the better, it's for the worse. Yeah. You gotta basically, you know, again, reiterating, stop doing it. Go back to that traditional way. This, it's not gonna take a time overnight. Get your partner in on this. Or meet somebody and have them do it for you. Who is to say? Uh, if that's going to help you work with it. And, you know, those who go back to that conventional ways, if you haven't had an orgasm for an extended period of time, like, we're meaning, we're talking weeks here, even months, not like a day or a minute, we're talking a length of time, like a week. A month. You need, at this point, especially when it comes to prone masturbation, you need to limit even traditional masturbation. And this really, you know, limit it down to only when you can do it. And this is without resorting to the old habit of face down. And this is what that is. So if you feel, all right, you didn't prone masturbate and you're going to stop this right now. I'm going to go back to traditional. It's not that easy. It is a habit to get into. It's habitual. But you've been unable to orgasm. So don't masturbate. It's going to kill you. It's going to think, you're, you are like, oh my God, this is way too much. <laughs> Uh, sometimes that's like the hardest part of it all is that stopping doing it. And then wait like until like you have the time to go in and literally just sit down and masturbate the traditional way. Like I said, if you need somebody else to come in and you get mutual, uh, mutual masturbation going, you know, it is a difference. And that might be helpful for you. So remember that as well. Uh, usually if a male does find out what the dangers are to it, like they've been doing it for so long, but then they're thinking, oh, there's no danger there. I can still have sex with the female or I can do it this way with, you know, masturbate this way with no problems. Well, you probably really aren't aware of what damage it has already taken. But for those who do actually learn about it, 
before they've even gotten the immense damage, they really, uh, like, really quickly to give it up and stop masturbating uh, in the prone position. And they do this within a very short time of learning what damage is. Because, you know, they don't want to damage them, you know, their penis. God knows. They want sex. So we don't want to damage our little friend there. And they usually give it up, like, within a week. Now, if you're well beyond that and you're having major difficulties and the damage is far gone, you're going to go with stopping doing it, but also um, seeking medical attention at that point. But there are some steps, like I vaguely went over in the first segment, to overcoming prone masturbation. Obviously, first, right off the top of the list, is design, decide to give up prone masturbation forever. Okay? Like I said, there are those individuals who do have a hole in their bed or two beds pushed together. There's that space there. This is where there's no space whatsoever in your uh, in a pillow, into the bed, or like that, which is something that is very, very dangerous. All right, so we are thinking, give it up forever. Go back to traditional. Now, the next one, thing is, you know, that take that week off from all, and I do mean all, sexual activity, including masturbation. Oh, my God, I think half of you just dropped on the floor by hearing that. <laughs> it's okay to go a week. It makes it that much more intense when you do engage in it and more satisfying. Remember that. Third is after the end of that week, masturbate to orgasm using only your hand. Put it in your pants. Heaven only knows. Just take a day to yourself at night or wherever time of the day it is and go to town. Just your hand, not using anything else. You know, just your hand. Get your, get your penis back to that lovely feeling of stroking. That up and down, that, oh my God. You know, and imagining that you're in a vagina and just thrusting away. So think about that. Four, then masturbate, masturbate by hand daily. So they get some good outlook there for a month. A lot more time, huh? A lot more orgasms. <laughs> and then you know, as you get to the end of the month, you're generally ready uh, to try sex with a partner now without any problemos. And then you have three to four months after quitting prone masturbation. There'll be such a, you know, a noticeable improvement in your erections. And you're doing them the traditional way. And not hurting yourself. Now, on that note, we are going to take our next break. So, replenish your snack, replenish your drink, or just sit right there and continue to masturbate. But I still will be back for more sex talk with Andra after the break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the talking about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back to the third segment in the show, and I hope we are now stopping prone masturbation. Come on, guys. We don't want damage. We want good penis. And on that, and knowing that, you need to stop it. Yes, it gave you a sensation, but it made more damage than it did good. So, please use the steps to stop it. Don't do that. Don't even masturbate with your hand for a week. Then masturbate, because at that point, your penis has become so sensitive and it is just ready and rearing to go go back to traditional masturbating techniques you know how to do them you know how they're done do it and then you know after a month or so have some banging sex and keep it up you know because sex actually strengthens the penis, the muscles, the nose, all that. That's what it is for. Sex is good. Masturbation is good. You just need to do it traditionally, not in the prone position, which is very detrimental. Now, moving along, you know, for all you well-endowed men out there, and probably the ones that think they are, and they're going to have a big rude awakening. But hey, you could try it just the same. Because there are toys out there now for the man to just extend, you know, put an extension of their penis right on them. So do look into them. But yeah, you know, if you got, are you really, really big? You have difficulty finding a girl who can actually take it. Whether it be oral sex. Let's not go with that one. We're just talking traditional sex. And getting your full pleasure out of it. Because that's what you're both there for. Pleasure of a sex. And it is difficult for somebody who's big. Especially a man who's very well endowed. Has a nice size song. Nice size penis. In the technical terms. (laughs) <laughs> to have sex with that girl who's smaller or with a man who's just very small. They want that full feeling all the way in with their penis. And I don't blame them. You got it? Use it. But we are going to talk about how to have sex with a very well endowed penis. That bigger than average a penis. Now, there are ways to have sex. Obviously, you have your anal sex, your uh, oral sex, and there's that traditional vaginal sex. In in every way, you want the most of it. Because remember, we are trying to get to that orgasm and have a really good one. Now, we've always lived with the notion that bigger is better, especially in the size of the man's genitals. But it doesn't, you know, thinking that it's bigger is going to make sex better. That doesn't, you know, that penis size really does not dictate how good sex is going to be. The bigger the guy, the worse they may be in bed. The smaller the guy, they might just be low your mind in bed. You know, you got it. Use it. It's all in how you use it, as the saying goes. And, you know, you could sit there and think about it. And everybody, every woman does it. I don't care what you say. Every heterosexual woman, I'm being specific. Yes, you can 
get me on that if you want, but every heterosexual woman likes a good sized man. I'm just saying. And there's that competition that comes in with men. <laughs> with that but you can do that like let's whip it out on the table you do that in your own that isn't what this is about uh however you know this is really depending on really how big you're talking in the venus size having a sex with a very well endowed male not that bigger than average penis has a lot of tra um, challenges that comes with it and we all know that having good sex isn't all about the penetration so there are way ways to do it and there are ways to even ride them like a cowboy or like a horse as you want to call it that bucking horse or want to ride the beast as it will be called in this particular instance I just asked her, what do you mean by big? Now, there was a study that was done. And this study was done. I'm going to give you, actually, two years ago, not too long ago. Because we just kind of sort of got into 2021. So, it's been maybe a year. And it was on penis size. And what the average penis length came out to be was 3.6 inches which is 9.16 centimeters and while the flaccid the bigger well it's really you know erect uh that's if well flaccid is when you're not erect let me clear that up i know it came out backwards flaccid is when you're not erect when they were erect uh, it was 5.2 inches, 13.12 centimeters, although it sounds better on the centimeter size. It is the same size. <laughs> um, now, as far as the girth was concerned, the average circumference is 3.7 inches, which is 9.31 in centimeters. And that's while flaccid. And 4.6 inches. 11.66 centimeters while erect you know and if you you know to be considered bigger than average you got to go about that considerably considerably above what the average has been found to be and found in the study so you can't say that it is not uh something you can work by a study was done so take those measurements you got to be well above those all right now if you're having penis and vagina sex good old stick in the hole obviously taking something that's huge you're wondering whether you uh can actually do it in your that vagina say whoa 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 you know it could be a little intimidating it's not impossible but intimidating the key to it is really to find ways to make it feel good for everybody involved. Okay, hopefully just the two people. Uh, but if you want one than one, hey, the door is open. Go for it. Now, there are some positions that come along with trying to accommodate a bigger than average penis. Or a will end out man. This is, these positions, shall I say, cover like all skill levels. So, first one is our favorite as all, which is generally the missionary. Here is the tight missionary. Now, the partner, the female, obviously the one with the vagina, controls how much of the well-endowed penis they are going to take in and this is by keeping their legs together when getting banged or having that thrust missionary style 
So legs are coming in there. Now to do it, uh, obviously assume the typical penis on top position, the typical missionary position. However, the female or the person being penetrated, we are talking female here, so for purposes of this, we'll talk of female. Although, if it is male on male, it probably is a lot more, you get a lot more penis wise because where your anus is located. You yeah, look at that way, they're really getting it. Um, now, we're in typical missionary position. Pen the penis holder is on top, or oh, penis inhabitant is on top. <laughs> And then only the person who is being penetrated keeps the legs inside of their partner's legs. So generally a missionary, what do you do? You open your legs and your partner comes in. In this position, they're kind of sort of straddling over you. You keep your legs closed between their legs. Okay, so, and this, what does is creates a tight squeeze and gives you that sensation that you are being fully you know for the person who's penetrating that the receiver is getting a good amount of the large penis so it's giving that uh, you know the addedness now obviously outside and the legs are not producing lubrication Get some lubrication for the legs on all over so that you in all over your penis so that you know you can do and have that sen same sensation while in from the part of the penis that is not penetrating get that same sensation because the legs are together providing it and with that wetness and that slipperiness on the lubrication will help now you can just at this point just put your hand down there and play with the clit using a vibrator or a, you know your hand one or the other whatever you feel you want to do the next position on our list is spooning now that's always the intimate romantic bonding position but however deep penetration is not allowed in this one. However, even coming from behind, someone with a uh, well-endowed penis, actually you'll probably get more there. So, because you got you come from behind and you got to go underneath to get there. So, obviously, greatest position, kissing the neck and all that stuff, and you can take your hands from behind. You know how to do it. I don't have to tell you that, but those things will add up because you can also probably uh and this is you know it's funny that it's not even mentioned here but they have masturbation toys for men where obviously it's a sleeve for the part of the penis that's not getting uh that penetration you could put pull it all the way down to that part of the penis while the other part of the penis is going in uh, you're still getting, you're holding on to that, or you can have your partner hold on to it. You're still getting that feeling all the way down your penis. So I'm surprised they didn't put that, or they don't talk about that, but that is also a, uh, an option. Because there are so many sexual toys out there now that you can play with. Now, next one is side by side. Obviously, this is the opposite of from behind and swooning. It is the face-to-face -face swooning type thing. Uh, it does have its limits for deep penetration. And what that is, it's really more for shallower penetration. But with somebody who has a very long penis, this might even help. Because you're facing each other. You can reach over there. Legs can be still there. No problem. You can still do the same thing with the toy that you have for a man. It is very uh, good for intimacy and perfect, you know, 
if you like to kiss, and most people know that, so I don't think I gotta tell ya. Uh, and on that note, we're gonna take the final break in the show. So when we come back, we'll continue with our well endowed counterparts in you know, a few positions there. And then close out the show with a I wanna close out the show with a sex position. I like that idea. So completely up to you if you want to go get more drink or more snack. But do you remain comfortable in whatever position you are in at this time? And finish up because we're almost to the end of the show. So I will still meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra after the break. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back to the final portion of today's show. And we've been talking about prone masturbation, or technically traumatic probation uh, masturbation <laughs> syndrome. And to stop doing it because you're making more damage than you are getting off and go back to traditional ways and some ways to uh, stop doing it. If you're like well beyond and the damage is done, please seek out some herbal remedies or beyond that, please go and seek out medical attention before the damage is permanent. It is not very good. But then now we're talking about something fun although masturbation is fun and everybody does it whether they tell you they do or not uh you can do masturbation you can engage in it all you want just not in the prone position please men and we're moving on with you know we had moved on to having sex with the well-endowed male you know, that larger than life penis and we started talking about some different positions to use. So we're going to continue on with that. I want to close out the show with a position of choice. And then that's how we'll go. So let's get it going. Now the next position is called vulva on top. Come on. Means female. But... Generally, this one right now is uh, a good position for those males who are a little smaller because it allows for deeper penetration. So with thinking of that, you're going to set your thing, well, whoa, okay, the idea of this is riding your partner's penis. And that, wait a second, if they're huger huge 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 or well endowed or bigger than average shall we say how you gonna do that simple as that now the reason the, you know vulva on top position works is that it allows the woman 
to control the depth. And they can, you know, as a woman, can control that depth with care. You know, to the point where they know they're not going to get hurt, but can control it. So, that's why it is very good. It does go deeper, but she is controlling it. And you can straddle your partner, like you usually do. Who, and of course, they're laying on their back. And then use your hands, your legs, their hands, their legs to control how you're going to ride. So that's where that comes in. Next one is the standing doggy. Now, you know that the traditional doggy style is a favorite to most. However, doggy style with someone who is well endowed is or could be really a little bit rough. It obviously, reasoning why is because your partner with the well-endowed penis becomes a little overzealous, you know, and they're in control and they want, you know, they just love pounding from behind in the regular doggy style. So with a dance standing doggy style, it makes for a little bit of a deeper penetration and hotter so now to do it obviously the female partner will stand facing the wall and it's support and this is while the well endowed penis partner enters from behind obviously we are talking doggy style standing or sitting or kneeling uh, and it might you know it may take a little of squatting or tiptoeing with this, you know, from the female. And it's just to get that angle just right. Whereas they can put it in a little bit deeper and without hurting you. So, now we're moving on to penis in the anus sex. Or anal sex. Now, remember the anus, if you're going too deep with it at all, everything, but really this, you can really, do, you know, put a real hurting on your partner, be it male or female. On top of that, the anus is tighter than the vagina. You got, you're taking this well-endowed individual. It can get very painful to do. You can do, you know, you can tear in the skin and, uh, you know, can really send your partner into crying pain. You got to be really, really, really careful with this position. And, you know, try some different positions when you're doing this. Because you don't, remember, you don't want to go too quickly in there you lots of lubrication because we are covering a larger area of penis and a larger length a longer length shall i say sorry so remember all of that go slow and just do you know use toys but you know, use toys anyways to stretch it out so don't uh Especially with a well-endowed individual, do not do this right off the bat. We can kind of sort of have to be a little careful back there. You know, the vagina is made for it. Granted, you still can get hurt. You still got to treat her with care. Now, obviously, the missionary position in general, it allows for deep penetration. I know we would talking about a uh, bit of a tweak on that but you can still do the missionary position uh, remember if you're going with the traditional your partner's legs are open so you're not going to get all the way up there and you're not getting that missionary position where their legs are close together so this might go in where you get that male masturbation toy or sleeve to go over to help with a lot of lubing and everything 
So remember that. It might just be that uh, stick your head in kind of tease to get you off. You know, you're really, you know, the woman who's receiving, or the male actually in this position, who's receiving is lying on their back. And you actually, as the penetrator, you can hoover above. And then, you know, you enter. Their legs are slightly parted or parted all together. Don't, you know, reach down. Don't, you know, don't forget to reach down. And uh, show those gentle to some love with your fingers and everything. Because you're hoovering. You can do actually a lot of good things with this position. Because if you're hoovering and partial part of your penis is out because it's huge. The partner receiving can actually lube up, put the hand there. And kind of sort of give the feeling of extension. So remember that as well. Another one is... The sleeping dog. This is ouch free doggy style with uh, the well endowed person. And it's very good with this because this is a modification of the regular doggy style. Instead of, you know, obviously getting on the old four, all fours for penetration, the, re, you know, the person, the partner will lie flat on the bed, stomach and their legs straight and together, stomach on the bed. Their legs are straight together. Again, you're getting, when you're going in, you're getting the tightness of going through their legs. And then in penetrating, you're getting a full pleasure there. And that's really good because uh, generally in this one, it kind of sort of limits how deep you can go. But it doesn't take away from the pleasure because the legs are taking over. Remember, you want it a little sloppy and wet, lube up them legs. Simple as that. That why lube is there. Uh, there are s several positions. You have the easy rider. And this is basically the anal sex version of the vagina on top position. And remember that if you are well endowed, the anus is a little bit more sensitive and delicate than the vagina. And Lord knows, I can't even believe I'm even saying that, but it is true, and you can hurt somebody very badly with that. Um, generally, men who are well in doubt are well familiar with their penis, what it can and cannot do, and how to stimulate it. Uh, reverse Easy Rider, and it's basically, again, for uh, anal loving sex, uh, people who love anal sex. And it's basically a little bit of an altercation in a, a, a change of the easy rider where you're just doing it from behind. And you can, you know, the person with uh, the well endowed member can control and see while the other person actually can hold on to something which will give them the support while this individual enters from behind. There's the butt to butt. Now, yes, I did say butt to butt. If you put butt to butt and someone is very well endowed, it will put the penis in a downward position, but it, that downward position is curving to go to the back. So it's really getting a lot of uh, play there, the shaft of the penis. But it is good for anal sex, so remember that. And, and to do it, it's basically the partner who is receiving is lying face down with their legs spread. And the giver lies on top, also face down, but facing their partner's feet. Uh, and this leaves pretty much butt to butt with the penis resting just above your anal entry. So, in both can thrust. In this position. Now, if you're, if you want to engage in oral sex, which is, you know, a good part of sexual, you know, whatever, just sexual penetration is not the end all and the holy grail of sexual positions. 
oral sex uh, in erogenous zones of fun as well to help achieve those orgasms, especially with somebody who's well endowed because you're giving his penis lots of love and that's every inch of his penis. So that is what it is all about. Now there is the lay back and enjoy. Uh, and that's really with that partner who is receiving, you know, lies on the bed and the partner just does all the work and does whatever they want or whatever. But if you want to turn this around, uh, you can actually take that where the partner who's giving is on the bottom and the person who's well endowed actually controls with oral sex that way as, you know is really good so remember that but just be very delicate not to go too far even with oral sex a lot of things out there that you can work with you have the have a seat the slip and slide they are all out there the doggy position which is very versatile but just be very careful um and Please introduce the toys that you have. You did not buy them uh, to look at them. Face sitting is also in there. You know, just because they have a well endowed penis does not mean that they cannot enjoy the sex because it is there for all to have and enjoy in whatever way you like it. So remember that. Somebody with a well endowed penis, you gotta move the things around and try different things. You neither want either one of you's hurt. So just remember that as well. Uh you wanna have fun, you wanna get that out, you wanna get your groove on either way you want it, you know? So with that being said we are going to give you the sex position for today, which is the valedictorian. For those of you who were the valedictorian, this one's for you. Uh, it's really good when your partner is really flexible and a little bit, well, mobile in the hip area, has lots of mobility. Uh, it is a tighter experience for both you and your partner so that's really good and uh has a really sexy vantage point believe it or not and you can like do this in a mirror and watch and see how much you like it and to do it you know there's a little modification which makes it so the impact the sexual uh allure and the sexual oh my god has such an impact. All right, so you're gonna lay down in the missionary position, partner, and the partner is going to be on their knees. Now, leaning back onto the heels, raise one leg up against your partner's chest, and this is how you are going to penetrate. So you're going to put one leg on your partner who is laying on their back up while you come in and penetrate while the other one's down. A little tricky, gives you a little tightness in there, but tight is always good sometimes. Get that. You might just ejaculate right then and there. Heaven only knows. Or you might have to do it a couple of tries, even if you know how to hold off your orgasm. With that being said, thank you very much for listening in. And as usual, please practice safe sex, no matter what size you are. Okay? You know, do it for yourself and your partner, or vice versa. You know, if it is not for yourself, do it for your partner and vice versa. Always, always reciprocate. Uh, if you're learning anything new or some new position, anything in particular, or if you have questions, please 
with regards to the topic of prone masturbation, uh, hence its name, traumatic post, uh, masturbation syndrome. Please educate, communicate, and consent in all areas, please, and thank you. So, thank you for tuning into the GSMC Sex Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Please hit the subscribe button. It's right there. Give us five stars. Very much appreciated. Not only helps me, but it does help the GSMC Podcast Network to know that what they are bringing you is what you want to hear. Also, please reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, because we are there. You know, hit that little like, thumbs up, or the little heart. Show us some love, and leave a comment on what you want to hear on the show. With that being said, again, I will say thank you for listening in, and you have an awesome sex night. The weather is changing. We are, I believe, considered to be in spring now. It's something to look forward to. So, bye-bye for now, and until next time, for more Sex Talk with Andra. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.